Okay, okay. All right. Really appreciate everybody for jumping in. My name is Law Nation, and we're going to talk about the Philadelphia Eagles no! interviewing. No! Yes, the Philadelphia Eagles interviewing Bone Fossil. <laughs> Sources are out, according to Marcus Hayes. The Eagles are interested in interviewing Cowboys special teams coach John Fossil, formerly of the Rams. You guys remember that he was the interim coach when they got rid of their coach or what have you. Uh, and then he also coached over there at Raiders land and Ravens. And he is the son of former Giants head coach Jim Fossil. Now, my thing is. The craziest thing of it all, I believe that the Eagles are really, really doing their due diligence, right? Leaving no stone unturned. Now, the craziest thing of it all, they're really looking into the Dallas Cowboys, right? They are. It is laughable. It's hilarious because it's hard for me to even explain this. Nevertheless, uh, John Fossil or Bone Fossil, he's a high energy guy. Players love him. Now, one of the guys went to bat for him is uh, Jay March. You guys remember him, special teams guy. He said that, hey, basically, he's one of the best humans and coaches he have ever been around, I'm paraphrasing, what have you. And I guess he was going back and forth with, with a few of the guys that's out there uh, that was saying otherwise of him. And he, he kind of lamented the fact that, yeah, the, the actual Cowboys, believe it or not, were ranked 31st in special teams. And now when Bone Fossil got there, they was ranked 11. So that's an area of improvement. Now, to be, you know, uh, objective about it, maybe, just maybe, the Eagles are looking at it like, how can we cause discourse with the Dallas Cowboys? How can we get them to, to think twice and multiple times about their coaching staff? Because they already... I guess wanted to interview Kelly Moore. I don't know whether or not that happened or not. And then they also put this out there that they want to interview Bone Fossil. Whether it's legitimate or whether or not it's genuine or not, that's the best way to put it. We don't know. But it's the Eagles for crying out loud. Cry, Eagles, cry. You look, look, I cannot make this stuff up. This is what they do. It's just what they try to bring out. The only organization to fire the only coach to ever win them a Super Bowl, right? The only organization to kick out and sully, you know, and, and push away the only quarterback to ever win them a Super Bowl, right? Nick Foles. The only organization to have a premier coach and Andy Reid to have all of those years of, of success and a few years of a downward spiral for them to panic and say, okay, they bring in Chip Kelly. Granted that they did win a Super Bowl with a previous coach, uh, Peterson. But my thing is, just look at the resume of Andy Reid. He was no slouch as a coach. Every single Sunday you play against the Eagles, you know for sure that, they, that you have to play your best in order to beat them. So it is what it is. Shout out to the Eagles for doing all of the craziness, leaving no stone unturned. Nevertheless, when we look at the Eagles, they are what they are. Now, I'm saying that this is more of a trend, too. Dan Campbell, shout out to him. He got him a coaching job. Did he have the perfect resume for it? No. Is it a buddy-buddy system in the NFL? Hmm. I'm going to let you guys think about that. We know it's buddy-buddy system. We know that some of these guys that get the opportunity to coach in the National Football League, you got to know somebody to get somewhere. We know how that goes, right? We know how that goes. And, and we can try to circumvent it with the Rooney rule and all of that stuff. But at the end of the day, the owners need to be comfortable in a billion-dollar extravagant homes or what have you. And I believe that nine times out of ten, they are more comfortable with people that look like them. Is it wrong for that? Mm. Look, people do what they want to do. And the NFL is the NFL, baby. And these guys are not billionaires by mistake. they billionaires because they make the calculated risk. That's the reality of it. And nobody. Look, I, I, I tell you this. It's hard to tell people what to do when they're making forty five dollars to $50,000 a year, right? Can you imagine somebody making billions? 
it's hard to tell them what to do. So this little crazy stuff of bringing in qualified or quality coaches to interview for a certain job or position, or if you have insight, knowledge of a certain player that used to play for the NFL and they want to coach, then you will skew that. And there's a lot of room for ambiguity. It's a lot of room for stuff that we don't know. But the Eagles, they're going to do what they're going to do. And all of these owners are going to do what they're going to do. And the only reason why I'm saying that, because a lot of people said, well, Eric B. Enemy, maybe just maybe he's turning down a job. Maybe he's not a great at interviewing, right? Maybe he can't put together uh, a great portfolio to showcase how he can elevate a team. Maybe that's the situation and scenario. Some people are not good at interviewing. That could be the case. It could be. It flat out could be Cowboy Nation. And my thing is, we can look back at this thing and we can say to ourselves and laugh. We can laugh. But to be honest with everything, we laugh when they had Chip Kelly. We laugh at Doug Peterson when he had his first year. And then the second year, all of a sudden, we looked around and said, damn, they won them a Super Bowl. <laughs> so... I'm just going to hold all of my laugh. But right now, it's funny going through the process of watching them bringing in this coach and that coach. And then we looking back at it saying, man, oh, man. Now, Cowboy Nation, we still got our homework to do. We still got some things that we got to uncover. We still have to win in free agency. I do believe that free agency is such a pivotal role for any team. Most, majority of the teams that win the Super Bowl did something in free agency to get them there to complement the pieces that either that they drafted or to complement the pieces that they had on their team for a minute or to look at things where they saw, hey, these are areas that we need to improve on. Right or wrong? He ain't lying. So my thing is, when we look at this particular team, we're talking about the Cowboys now, we got to dance a little bit in the free agency. We can't go out there and say, okay, we're going to get this Walmart, TJ Mack, Marshall, Dollar Store player. And there's nothing wrong with those guys, but we can't depend on those guys. We can't lean it all on those guys. If that can ever make sense, we can't lean all on these Walmart Dollar General guys and expecting them to bring in different results. That's all I'm saying. Um, the teams that do, they, they they figure it out and get one or two players. I've seen some people say, well, one or two players is not enough, Law. That's bull sugar. One or two players can't change your team. Think about this. Just think about this. If you go out there and get a guy that can be an impact, maybe causes maybe one or two interceptions more within a week span or two week span, that's game changing. There's more opportunities for your offense to get the ball back. Or if you get an explosive guy that can help your offense out to score you one or two touchdowns. You see how it goes? I know that football is an ultimate team sport, right? It is. Nevertheless, you got to have those playmakers. And the coaches got to do their due diligence as well. That's all the time that I have for right now. I really appreciate everybody that's tuned in. Uh, it's crazy what the Eagles are doing, but it is what it is. Let's sing. Cry, Eagles, cry to the land of no victory. Cry, Eagles, cry. <laughs> Boy, they put a smile on my face every offseason because they do some crazy stuff that's been my time i really thank you all for yours and remember you're listening to nothing but the best let's go salute 